So there's people who basically learn to code forever. And, uh, you know, they've been coding for whatever, one year, two years, maybe a few months, and they don't really seem to be making any progress. And in the end, don't really get anywhere. Whereas we see other people who seem to only code for, say, a few months, a year, two years, and they get to where I want to go. I believe the difference between these two people is what they focus on and how they study. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what to focus on if you're learning how to code to hopefully get you to where you want to go. I'm someone who went from zero to getting a job at a Silicon Valley tech company in just under two years. So I'm going to share uh, share how, uh, how I would learn to code in this video. Without further ado, let's dive into it. All right. Now, firstly, I remember back, you know, I'd be sitting at my desk. This was before I had my job. So I'd be sitting at my desk and I would want to learn how to code, right? And it was already a very overwhelming experience. A lot of thoughts going into my mind. Am I smart enough to do this? Will I be able to do this? At that time, I was dead broke, um, working a minimum wage job, and I'd just taken this venture hoping it would work out. And with all this stress, uh, mental stress already in my mind, the last thing I wanted to do was to learn something heavy, you know, mentally heavy, like coding. So I would spend uh, a lot of time doing productive work, basically wasting my time. I'd say, oh, I'm going to research this a little bit. Oh, I'm going to look at job boards now. Oh, I'm just going to watch this video. It's closely related to coding. It'll probably help me out. And I wouldn't just sit down and code, right? And that's the most important point I want to get across. If you want to be successful, you want to learn how to code, as simple as it may sound, you need to sit down and code, okay? Don't be wasting time watching some random video. Don't be wasting time, you know, reading something somewhat related. No, you need to sit down. You need to code. All right. So I wanted to get that point across first. Now, I got a CS degree. I always, always recommend getting a CS degree. I am going to tell you what I would recommend for self-taught people as well in just a second, because I think that's uh, mainly the people who will be watching this video. But I do want to say if you can afford to get a CS degree, you have the time and money for it. I highly, highly recommend you do so. Okay, college gives you networking opportunities, internship opportunities, so many opportunities that you don't get as a self-taught individual. I would highly recommend college. But um, if you if you don't have the time nor the money, uh, the there are self-taught options, right? And they do work out for people, right? Well, let's dive into that. Um, there's resources that I would recommend, like Free Code Camp. I like Free Code Camp because it's very project-based. The Odin Project, I believe, is very project-based, though I've never used that myself. And there are a few Udemy courses that I'm going to leave in the description as well. Some of them I've used, and I'll specify in the description which ones I've used. Some of them I've just heard good things about, so you can make a decision, uh, you know, whether or not you would like to take that course. Now, as far as what to focus on, because these resources, they'll touch many different things. Like Free Code Camp has like data science courses, front-end courses, back-end courses. I recommend focusing on front-end web development. Web development because there's a good amount, amount of demand for it. And front end, because just from the trends that I've seen in the industry, it seems that at the junior level, generally, it's easier to get your foot in the door at the front end rather than the back end. So that's why I would recommend going the front end route. All right. So that's like it, really. I am going to touch on more things, but if you do that, if you take this advice, if you take one of these resources, you run with it, you make projects, and you actually sit down and, again, focus on the coding aspect, you make some projects... I think you're well on your way to getting a coding job. But now I want to touch on a few more things that I believe will help you get that first coding job. Firstly, behavioral interviews, right? Now, before previously, I was horrific at behavioral interviews. Like I remember one at one interview, this wasn't related to coding specifically, but you know, there, there was a panel of interviewers in front of me and I was sitting on the other side of the table and they asked me a question and they were just staring at me and I have anxiety, right? So I, in those moments, I don't perform the well. Now I've learned to overcome that. Like I still have a little bit of anxiety, but back then it was way worse, right? So I'm just sitting there like my heart, like beating out of my chest and like, uh, uh, you know, and I don't have the answer to whatever question they ask. And it was just the most uncomfortable experience ever, though I'm glad it happened. And the point I'm making is, look, behavioral interviews are something I feel like is not talked about enough in this kind of tech industry world. And anyone who tells you not to focus on behavioral interviews has it all backwards. You should never listen to them ever, ever, ever. Okay. I can tell you without working in the industry, there is nothing worse than working with a person who is just, um, you know, socially difficult to work with. 
right? I would much rather work with someone whose tech skills were maybe subpar, but they were good at communicating and they were easy to work with than the other way around. Because tech skills are usually easier to teach people, people skills are not, right? So I really do want to drive this point home. Like, it, it's horrific working with someone who is hard to work with. And it, like, it's just borderline, like it can totally ruin your work experience, everything. So when companies are doing these interviews, they will be looking at you as a social person as well. How were you to work with? Are you easy to work with, not easy to work with? And again, anyone who tells you not to focus on behavioral, don't listen to them, just run away. Don't listen to them. They don't know what they're talking about. Focus on the behavioral. Now, the number one advice I have to ace the behavioral interview is look into the STAR principle, okay? That's, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, situation, task, action result. I'm going to summarize it very, very briefly, but I'll leave a link in the description uh, that goes more into it. Situation. If they, someone asks you a behavioral question, like, I don't know, tell me about a time you helped out a coworker. S, situation. Lay out the situation for them. This was a situation. Task. What was the task that you had to do? Action. What action did you take to help the coworker? And then the result. At, from the action that you took, what was the result that came about, right? So that's been one of the main principles that helped me the most. I hope this uh, this will help you out as well. Now, the last thing, or, or not the last thing, one of the last things I'd recommend is lead code. Now, some people might be surprised to know uh, why I've thrown this last, right? Because a lot of the tech prep, interview prep and such always puts lead code at the front. I'm gonna explain why I put it last. So I put it last because it's largely a thing that a lot of big tech companies will look for, and it's important to be good at it, don't get me wrong, but I think you can get hired without it, at least at smaller companies. So I would first focus on having that portfolio, making sure you know how to code. Once you know that, then you can move on to uh, the lead code side and keep on, keep on improving your lead code skills as you're applying and such, right? I remember when I got hired at the current job that I'm at, right? I had an initial tech screen and they asked me a lead, style, a lead, uh, lead code style question, and I bombed it. Like, I didn't, I couldn't even get to, usually what they do is they ask you an easier one, and then if you get that, they'll ask you a harder one. I didn't even know where to start with an easy one. I did horrific on the lead code style question. But after when me and the interviewer got to chatting, I asked good follow-up questions, and I actually ended up getting hired at this company. And I ended up speaking to my interviewer after, and I asked him, I was like, hey, you know, I thought I had bombed that technical assessment, yet you still moved me forward. Why is that? And he told me that it was because I asked very good questions. I was very curious. So he had a good feeling and he moved me forward in the process. So again, this goes back to the people skills, right? The, just something to think about. I think focusing on the behavioral social skills, very important. And next, apply a lot. Now, so many times I see in like these um, Reddit or other uh, forums, where people will say, oh, uh, I, can't, I can't get a job. And then someone will ask them, well, how much have you applied? And they'll say, oh, I sent out 10 applications last month. Are you kidding me? Right? Like, that, that is ridiculous. You can't send out, like, you're at the start of your job finding journey. You're competing with the entry level is saturated, okay? It's saturated. Every second person is trying to get a job. You're sending 10 applications a month, like, Nine of those may have just been automatically filtered out. And one of them, you know, the recruiter never bothered to look at because they already decided on the candidate before. Like, you can't be stingy with this. You know, for me, again, I'm just sharing my experience. For me, applying a lot was very, very, very important. I probably sent upwards of a thousand applications, if, maybe up to 1,500 throughout the course of me finding my job, trying to find an internship and then trying to find a job, everything, right? I wouldn't be surprised. If it's at the 1500 mark, you cannot just apply minimally. Now, if you're like crafting custom cover letters and such, I get that it's more difficult and then it's okay if your number is lower, but still it shouldn't be as low as like 10 a month. If you're trying to get your foot in the door, you need to apply as much as possible. Anyone who tells you otherwise, tell them to go away. Never talk to them again. No, you need to apply a lot. Okay. This is non-negotiable. All right. If you do these things, I think you are well on your way to landing the job that you want, right? I, I do want to kind of end the video off by saying, you know, be kind to yourself and be patient as well. As I hinted to at the start of this video, this is not going to be an easy journey, 
right? Sometimes these YouTube and such can make it think, make you think that because people will come out with these videos. Oh, I learned to code in three months and now I make like a million dollars. It's a difficult journey, right? But it's well worth it. Throughout this whole journey, I never felt that I was smart enough. I, I questioned my intelligence constantly. I questioned, uh, you know, whether or not I would make it constantly. Like, I, I'm not someone who's intelligent from my background. I didn't graduate high school on time. I failed college courses. I was super mediocre college student well below average high school student. So there were a lot of doubts in my mind throughout this whole process. But I just want you to imagine for a second if you were any if you were anywhere close to the position that I was in before, where I was dead broke, working a customer service job with customers yelling at me, um, you know, having to commute like one and a half hours just to get to my office to be making a little above minimum wage just to hear people yelling at me and all this shit. And going from that to the feeling of, uh, you know, putting in all this hard work. And then I still remember the day that I got my job offer for six figures remote. And I'm still at that job and I'm working with nice people, friendly people. I have good work life balance. I can work from home and I finally make enough money that I'm not broke anymore. It's been an incredible feeling and it's been an incredible journey. And I want you to, you know, experience that same journey of your own right? I want you to experience similar to what I've experienced. And honestly, I want to build like a little community of us here, all of us who come from that start that was less than ideal, maybe before you had a background like mine, where even throughout school, you struggled a lot. And now we get to this other side. And we have a stable, good career. And, um, uh, you know, we're having fun with life, we're enjoying life. That's really what I want to do with this YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, my social media journey. So if my start resonates with you at all, I'm rooting for you. I hope you make it. And if you put in the hard work, I know you'll make it, right? Um, that's all I have for this video. I'll leave my Instagram, TikTok somewhere here. Please do support there as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Peace.